Benjamin Netanyahu dismissing his defense minister after months of disagreements on Israel's war efforts. For more, we are joined now by former Undersecretary of Defense and former Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Robert Wilkie. Mr. Secretary, always great to see you. What does this mean for Israel's military operations moving forward? Well, I, I think it means that Netanyahu is, is pushing forward to a decisive victory over both Hezbollah um, and Hamas. I think there was tension within the cabinet with the defense minister who uh, wanted to pull back. And, and I want to say in his defense, he he had in the front of his agenda the, the rescuing of the, the hostages. Hopefully some of them are still alive. But strategically, Netanyahu has to. Uh, finally destroy both of these entities in, in order to secure Israel's uh, future. And I think that was the tension. Uh, and it's a very tough choice for mm -hmm. any national leader to make, uh, particularly in a country as small as Israel, where everyone knows everyone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mr. Secretary, we know that President-elect Donald Trump, he's already fielded calls from leaders around the world, from Canada, Saudi Arabia, India, France, South Korea, among others. What kind of reaction to Trump's election have you seen worldwide? Well, I, I can tell you, having been traveling, particularly through Eastern Europe, that uh, there is a great sigh of relief amongst those who are on the border with the, uh, the Russian Federation, uh, and also in the Middle East with Israel and the leading uh, Sunni Arab states. Uh, not what you would read in the New York Times and the Washington Post. Uh, remember, there was peace in the Middle East. There was peace in Eastern Europe because President Trump understood the uses of America's deterrent power. And he used that deterrent power to bring Israelis and Arabs to the peace table and to keep the Russians from gobbling up more of Ukraine and Moldova and many of those countries that are on the border with our allies in Eastern Europe. So a great sigh of relief. They're not happy in the salons of Paris, yeah. but then again, they're not happy in uh, in the in the halls of Harvard either. But uh, that's a sign that the president uh, is certainly on the right track. Yeah, Mr. Secretary, you're always our go-to expert for all things foreign affairs. We do have some breaking news that we're learning of that I want to ask you briefly about. So I know that late last night, a military judge ruled that plea agreements struck by the 9-11 masterminds is valid, which voids an order by Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin to throw out those deals. So now those deals are back on the table. What do you make of this? Well, if anything is is an example of the lunacy of the Biden administration's national security policy, mm -hmm. it's this one, that they've dragged this out. Uh, they're now offering uh, uh, deals with those people who actually killed more people uh, in one day than the Japanese killed at Pearl Harbor in 1941. Uh, I, I'm, I'm shocked that they took the step of uh, tossing aside the objections of the Secretary of Defense. I can't speak for President Trump, but I would think that he would intervene in this matter uh, to bring uh, these terrorists finally to justice and, and do that on behalf of the surviving members of the over 3,000 Americans who died at the hands of these killers. Yeah, absolutely. Very different administrations uh, handling these situations. Uh, what do you expect to happen with the situation in Ukraine when President Trump gets into office? Uh, having, having worked for the president and seen him uh, at the cabinet level, I'm, I'm going to guess, I'm not speaking for him, but I think the first call uh, will be to Mr. Putin, and it will be stop or I give the Ukrainians everything that they need. Uh, Putin would understand that because the first time that he, he tangled with Donald Trump in the Syrian desert, 300 of his troops disappeared. Uh, President Trump ordered them to be removed. Uh, he sent missiles into the desert and 300 of Putin's troops were killed. That sent a very clear message to Moscow that there was a different kind of sheriff in Washington, D.C. Mm. I think Putin has that in the back of his head. He also understands that under Donald Trump, unlike Joe Biden, American forces were rotated through Eastern Europe to remind the Russians that those countries that, that are still very close to, to Trump world um, are within the American sphere of influence and that he better not move against countries like Poland and Hungary and Romania. Mr. Secretary, your expertise is invaluable. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Really appreciate it. It's good to see you both.
Information. Truth. Is freedom. Is Newsmax. It's real news for real people.